are building a wall on the southern border, which is absolutely necessary. Now, the obstructionist Democrats would like us not to do it, but believe me, if we have to close down our government, we're building that wall. So that was President Trump in Phoenix on Tuesday night, threatening the shutdown of the government over funding for his proposed border wall. Here's how House Speaker Paul Ryan responded to that yesterday. So I don't think um, anyone's interested in, in having a shutdown. I don't think it's in our interest to do so. While we work on doing what we actually said we would do, what we've done already in the House, and we need to do, which is to control our border. So I don't think you have to choose between the two. So let's bring in Ryan Grimm. He's Washington Bureau Chief for The Intercept, and he joins us now from Washington. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Um, so, uh, sorry, Ray, thanks for joining us. We have Paul Ryan, who you've heard uh, his, uh, his response to what the president had to say. So they're going to be breaking their recess, heading back to uh, Capitol Hill, have a lot of work to do, the debt ceiling and other things. Where do you see this showdown going? Well, I think it's going to be a disastrous couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, it's it's going to destroy uh, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. It won't. It won't. They, it's not going to cost them their jobs, most likely, but it's going to be extremely damaging to them. And then what you finally will end up with is Ryan and McConnell sitting down with Democrats, negotiating a deal that conservatives hate, uh, jamming it through both chambers. And then the question is, does Trump wind up signing that? You know, he, he very much wanted a shutdown in the spring, if you recall. Like, there, there was this report that he even called, uh, or his staff put him on the phone with John Boehner to try to get John Boehner to talk him into not doing a shutdown and, and signing that thing. So he, he's itching for a showdown. Uh, so will he do it, or will he be talked out of it? It's impossible to predict with this president. Does the president know which party he belongs to? Well, he always refers, if you know, if you notice, uh, to the Republican Party from a distance. Right. Uh, it's 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 kind of interesting to watch. You know, uh, he he was a Democrat for most of his life. You know, just kind of, uh, you know, soaking in the Democratic soup there in in New York before he shifted to the birtherism and then and then adopting the Republican Party. But you're right. He does. He he certainly doesn't feel like a Republican. He, you know, he says Republicans do this, Republicans do that, you know, so uh, as if he's not one of them. And he isn't one of them, you know, fundamentally. So uh, he's now picking a fight with Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. Yeah. He loves to fight. That is not a fight that Mitch McConnell wins. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, picking the fight with uh, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. He was tweeting this morning that he had asked Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan to tie the debt ceiling increase to the VA bill, a very popular VA bill that just passed, but that McConnell, McConnell rather and Ryan rejected that idea. Just tell us what he's talking about. Uh, flesh it out for us. I mean, the, the idea here, and, and I'm not actually sure if he suggested this or if he thinks he suggested it, but the idea here would be you take this VA bill, it's moving through Congress and it's popular, and you attach this uh, thing to it that is very unpopular and, and, it, and it moves through together. You know, most people watching it uh, watching Congress would say that uh, that probably wouldn't have worked, that you'd have lost too many votes on the VA bill because so many hardline conservatives are committed politically to never voting for a debt ceiling increase that doesn't have massive cuts along with it. And it doesn't change that promise to tuck it in with a VA bill. And they would vote against the VA bill and say, well, look, I, I'm keeping my promise uh, to my constituents that I made here. So uh, it's, it's also just amusing to watch him, you know, uh, Monday morning quarterback this process that was, you know, sev several weeks old. Uh, but uh, both Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell have said, you know, there's no way we're going to default. You know, we're going to get the debt ceiling done. And Donald Trump, who, who does know a lot about interest rates from his time, uh, you know, in the real estate industry, uh, doesn't, doesn't want that cataclysmic uh, uh, kind of economic geopolitical crisis either. He has lots of investments around the world that would be very badly impacted if, <laughs> if that happened. So I think a, sh a government shutdown is certainly on the table, but I don't think a default is. Okay, so you don't think that they'll fail at this, this attempt to raise the debt ceiling? The stakes are they, too they, high. This, for, particularly for the president. You know, he, he, he would see losses in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. So do you think that he's going to sign something that would cost him that much money? I, I certainly don't.
Right. So all of this uncertainty in Congress comes as the president sort of shifted his tones uh, with his last remarks. He did sort of three speeches in a row, and they all sounded very different. Uh, one on Monday, a speech about Afghanistan and the plan there. Then on Tuesday, he was sort of off script at a rally, a campaign stein rally in Arizona. And then last night, uh, it was teleprompter. Donald Trump, as many people have called him, where he stuck to the script and he took to Twitter to sort of explain why the different tones and essentially said, look, I had different audiences. I'm paraphrasing. And so you speak differently with different audiences. But critics uh, are asking themselves this morning, well, which one's the real Donald Trump? Who's the real voice of Donald Trump? Can we talk a little bit about the impact of this sort of unpredictability? Right. What, what's, what's notable about the tweets that he threw out this morning is that he and he always lets you in to his mindset. He, he lets you know exactly what's getting under his skin. And after his rally in Phoenix, people across the political spectrum, his own party, if you want to call the Republicans his own party, as, as well as his opponents, were saying this guy is just not stable. Mm. You know, is this guy competent to serve out? No, you know, the rest of his term, he's, he seems off, off balance. He needs to get it together. You know, you have James Clapper coming out and, and saying he's the, the guy's, you know, borderline lunatic and we can't trust him with nuclear codes. And so Trump comes right back at James Clapper this morning, letting us know that that got, that got under his skin. Uh, so he's trying to address this idea that he's simply not competent to, to serve. That is one of the worst places you can imagine a president being, just defending their basic competency to right. do the job. Yeah, and you probably don't want to do it on Twitter, and you want to make sure that your grammar's correct when you do it, too. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Grimm of The Intercept, thanks a lot. We appreciate your time, Ryan. You got it.